All right. Hey everybody, I'm Ron at BridgeCom Systems. My call sign is KC0QVT, that's Kilo Charlie Zero Quebec Victor Tango. We are in the thriving metropolis of Smithville, Missouri, just about 15 miles north of Kansas City. I uh, hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. It's been, uh, been a couple weeks since we've done a live stream as far as doing some more uh, exploration of the Anytone. And uh, I see there's a lot of guys on here from all over the place. Vin Hines from uh, New York City, how you doing? Uh, Dan, K04 Echo Uniform Hotel, how you doing? Rod, uh, Echo, 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 somebody's getting an Echo. All right, not sure why that is. Richard Radcliffe, Huntington, Maryland. Hope, that, hope we don't have an Echo. Anyway, um, glad you guys are joining us for another live stream here. Uh, we got a couple things on tap that I'd like to go over with you guys. Um, more importantly, you know, uh, these, uh, it's a new world. Uh, the DMR radios and these hotspots have created a new frontier for us as amateur radio guys and gals. Uh, one of these little devices can pretty much unlock the entire world. Uh, connect you with all kinds of talk groups. We've been over this for the last couple of weeks, and I've, you know, wanted to show you what, you know, basically you've got uh, this. This frees up your ham radio. Putting one of these in your house or your vehicle allows for you to uh, basically talk to people all over the world. Uh, there's talk groups for just about every occasion. Uh, talk group 91's lit up all the time. Uh, North America is quite active. You can join nets. We talked about that last week where you can schedule your hotspot to uh, join a net at a predetermined time. Of course, if you're on the Brandmeister network and it's all set up and that's really cool. Uh, so anyway, yeah, one of these uh, frees up your ham radio. It really does. And uh, one of the things that, uh, I don't know if, if you guys have been paying attention, uh, they've the, if you're using the Brandmeister network, we need to uh, set up a password for uh, your hotspot on the network, okay? And it's, it's my understanding that this is, this is maybe causing some grief for some folks. Their hotspots used to work and now they don't. And it's because there was no password set up. And, and the folks at Brandmeister are, I think they, I, I don't, I've, I've heard they're staging it out over the course of uh, time. Like uh, there's three servers in the United States, 3101, 02, and 03. And I saw some dates on that. And then I've heard some, some people say, well, they've already done it. I don't know the answer, but either way, uh, we need to get those passwords set up. I don't have a password on this one yet. And so that's why I'm gonna work you guys, walk you guys through that. But anyway, uh, just some basics, um, you guys, uh, you know, go to radioid.net and get you a DMR ID. You got to have one of these. All right. That's, I keep saying it over and over, but it's, it's the starting point for us. So get you a DMR ID. And then, um, I'm not sure, hopefully you guys have access to this. I've, I've got some show notes They'll, uh, and I'm going to uh, basically follow this outline I've put together for you guys. So uh, hopefully you've got your uh, DMR ID, you've got a hotspot, you've got an 878 or an 868. In this case, we're gonna be working with an 878. And um, we're gonna show you how to set up the password on that. This is one of the items we're gonna work on today amongst a few other things. So uh, we, def we wanna jump into the computer here and we wanna go to Brandmeister, uh, the Brandmeister Network homepage. Okay, so that's probably got it already in here. Yep, it's already in here. So I'm gonna go into this. Okay, I'm gonna log in. Okay, now if you haven't uh, created a login for this, you need to do that. Um, it's real simple. It takes a, probably takes a day or so for them to get, get you a login. I've already created mine, but I'm gonna, you know, walk, walk through this, you know, with the assumption that you've created, you've got a password and, and you're already good to go there. So the first step is, is that we have to uh, log into our self-care account on the Brandmeister network. And I'm gonna go over here and click on the login. Okay, and it already pre-populates with my login and, or my call sign and my password, which I set up last time. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click login and this should bring me to my 
uh, homepage here. Okay, and then the next thing you want to do is up at the top right of the display, you want to click on your call sign and a drop down menu is going to appear. Okay, and then you want to click on the self care option. Okay. Now self care is going to pull up some stuff about you. Okay, uh, APRS interval, brand, Etsy, uh, that's, I don't know what any of this stuff, oh, okay, yeah, you could select your uh, brand, okay, we, we know the Antitones of Chinese radio, so I'll just choose that, <laughs> didn't even know that, you could put that, APRS test, this is just some miscellaneous things, uh, not gotten into the APRS stuff yet, but anyway, uh, just jumping down here, uh, go to where it says hotspot security, and in my case, it's been off. Okay, I've never turned this on yet. So I want to turn that on. And then I want to, cl I want to type in a password that I can remember. Okay, now this is not the same password as your login credentials. Whoops. It's not the same password as your login credentials for uh, Brandmeister. So I'm going to just type in something here. And I'm going to save this, okay. All right. Now, now what I want to do is I want to log in to the hotspot that I'm using running PyStar, which I know is right here. Okay. Um, let's see. I know my uh, hotspot is I've, I found the IP address, which is 192.168.2.3. So I'm gonna jump over here to configuration, okay? And this is where you wanna log in. And for most of it's pi dash star and raspberry, R-A-S-P-B-E-R-R-Y. -R All right. I don't want to save that. Okay, okay. Now we want to jump down here to the DMR configuration. Okay, and I'm on uh, 3102. The reason why I'm on 3102 is I'm in the Midwest. Okay, 3101 East Coast, 3103 West Coast, Midwest, 3102. Okay, where it says hotspot security, that's where you want to enter the new password you just did. So I'm going to put I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to apply the changes. Okay, and it'll take a moment or two to uh, put this in. And of course, you can see the little active thing up in the upper left upper upper uh, left corner, or my upper left corner. Okay, and it looks like it's restarting. Okay, so once it restarts, we'll we'll go ahead and test that. Okay. And uh, while that's restarting, we can go back and review, you know, as with these hotspots, you know, we're, I was on, I'm on uh, Brandmeister 3101 right there, okay, 31, I'm sorry, 31, um, 3102, okay, now these are, this is the server that's managing all the calls that are handled on the Brandmeister network. And of course, they, these are distributed all over the, uh, the world. They've, they've got folks handling all of these, handling these servers in various locations. A lot of countries have them. The United States has three of them. Uh, there's some in Canada. But one thing you'll note, this is, this is for Brandmeister, okay? Now, not everybody's on Brandmeister, interestingly enough. I mean, you've got, and we talked about this last time, you've got another network called TGIF. Okay, and that's in that drop down menu. That's another, that's a whole nother railroad. Okay, and Brandmeister is its own railroad. That's what we're focused on now because that's where most, most people are camping out. But you can go over here to this network called TGIF. Um, you've got some uh, private networks that are built around the Mark uh, platform. And these guys have gotten real creative that, you know, sometimes they link with Brandmeister. Uh, don't believe you can connect a hotspot directly to Mark. Those are all repeaters. But anyway, you, once you get into these networks, you can find out how big of a sandbox we've got, folks. It's, it's pretty big. 
Uh, Brandmeister's huge, TGIF, they're coming along. The Mark guys have been around for a long time. They use a uh, product that's uh, been commonly called the C-Bridge to link uh, repeaters or uh, TL net. And these, these have, these, these all link uh, peers, the, the, the Motorola repeaters, or if somebody's fudged it, they can get other brands in there. And I, I don't know a lot about that uh, and how that's done. I might have to have somebody on here sometime to explain a lot of that. But anyway, you've got these various uh, networks. And then there's, I've seen folks ask me to uh, connect them to their own network. They've got their own server set up. Uh, one guy uh, set, uh, built up a 220 DMR network, which I don't know if anybody's doing that yet. Um, but there's, uh, we know that the 578 does 220 DMR, so, um, you know, it's, there's a big sandbox and, and it's great to see that there's so much activity going on. All right, so now we, we've uh, updated here, okay, and we should be able to go over here to test this, all right. And we want to go over here to our dashboard. All right. And I've got my probably uh, head, head over here to the radio. First thing you want to try is the parrot. And I've, I've set this up so that uh, Joe can get a good screenshot and you guys can see what's going on. So I'm going to just try to hit the parrot real quick and see if I'm connected. It looks like it's all restarted. KC0QVT. KC0QVT. And it's not connecting. I can see. Yeah, there it went. I don't know why that does that. Sometimes it, you hit it the first time. Let's see. KC0QVT. Maybe we got a bad in. Okay. KC zero QVT monitoring. Zero QVT monitoring. Okay. Well, it went through that time. It's kind of odd. Uh, I mean, there's nothing wrong. The radio works. The hotspots in good. Uh, we got a fit. Oh, you know what's going on? Um, I set this up last time. We're going to go into Brandmeister real quick. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, if you go, yeah. I think I got a little relaxed. I was... Yeah, I think what's going on here, I set up Texas for static. Okay, yeah. And, and what's happening is, is if there's any activity going on on Texas, it's coming through. Uh, by default, and so that's, uh, I think I might have been don't, boinking with Texas, I, I don't know, let's see, let me, let me remove that real quick. Okay, so I shouldn't, okay, still somebody on there, all right. Okay, so what we want to do is we can try a disconnect here real quick, so I'll hit that disconnect, talk through uh, 4,000. I should hear an un not linked. Not linked. Yeah, okay, and now I can KC0QVT. KC0QVT. Okay. All right, you, I'm sure you have, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have done it. You're like, what, what's going on, you know? And you, you sit there and you try to figure it out. Well, clearly I had, I'd set up a, sto a static talk group. Now this is what I think was going on and why I wasn't, the parrot wasn't monitoring. I think that the uh, SkyBridge was trying to connect. There was a call coming in from uh, Texas because I had that st uh, set up as a static talk group. And so there, there might've been some contention there. I can't confirm it or not, but I mean, that's what, but anyway, I hit it there. So it looks like um, I'm, 
uh, if you want to go into the computer here, you can see that the last exchange I had right there was my, uh, my, my me hitting the parrot, okay? Looks like I got 3% loss, which I'm not certain. I don't know if that's because of the internet here or if I got a bad, I mean, we are, well, we, it should be pretty good. I don't know why that is. Um, <clears throat> normally it's pretty good. So we are good to go in Brandmeister. I should have satisfied the Brandmeister folks and I have a password, I'm all good. And I can go to my configuration page and I can see down here that I have a password now, okay? I don't know what that is. I can go to the dashboard and find out. Let's see what happened here. That's interesting. 3168, I don't know who he is. He came across on 990, and that's, that's odd. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what. K-F-0-C-I-X. You know, I bet that's, uh, <clears throat> I bet I know what that is. That's, uh, uh, that might be the guys over there doing some testing in the other room. <laughs> okay, you might want to run out there and tell them we're doing a live stream, uh, Joe. All right. Okay, so we got, we got the self-care account done. We got our Brandmeister password set up. Everything's good. Okay, just to, just to buy a quick, a, yeah. quick, quick set of housekeeping. Um, yeah, go over there and tell them not to, to, not to mess with this. Uh, yeah, because he's, he's uh, um, getting in there. Okay, so... Uh, in your configuration page, I'm going to do something that, you know, you guys all should do. Like right now, if you go down here to uh, the general configuration tab, there's this URL section. And this is where you guys can personalize your hotspot. So let's say, for example, somebody has a QSO with you and they look you up on Brandmeister. Well, they can click on this website and this is going to tell them all about you. So you have opportunity to reveal your, you know, reveal what's going on. Like a lot of, a lot of guys put their QRZ page here, um, but it's way you can personalize the hotspot and let folks know, where, you know, your own website. So um, I'm going to just put Bridgecom Systems here because that's me. So you can do anything you want here. It's your, it's your sandbox in this case. And I cannot put, are we field limited? Ooh, I guess you can. It can only be so big. All right, well then I'll do this. I'll put, maybe you don't need the www. All right, I'll put All right, and I'm gonna apply the changes. All right, so what happens there is that when anybody, when they go in and look me up on the last herd um, field that they can, uh, they can now uh, vector to my website, okay? And that's what's really cool about this is it's a, you know, we're, we're obviously doing this guys because we wanna meet people. We wanna meet other hams and when they look you up and you know they can see where you're from and what you're doing and, and then even send you a, a QSL card which we've done some here you know and you can you can do the QSL card thing with uh, the digital stuff too as well and that's pretty cool uh, meeting more more and more folks on on uh, these digital networks uh, okay while that's resetting um, what I was going to do is take you guys into a little bit of uh, what you can do on customizing your radio. 
Um, your radio, this is probably one of the few radios out there that gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of making it your own. I mean, you can put, you know, like there's a guy out there, uh, Greg Bedner, he makes these custom decals you can put in place of the Anytone logo. Uh, we've worked with him on some stuff. Uh, you you can actually put your own splash screens on there. You can have the power up uh, display. You know information is personalized to you, so it really becomes your radio. And you know that's I mean it's kind of cheesy in a way, but you know that's what we like to you know we like to you know you ever see people running around with bumper sticker or a uh, their their call sign on their license plate. I mean this is kind of what you're doing here with this radio. You can actually personalize it to. Uh, to make it your own. And I want to show you guys how you can quickly um, add uh, a splash screen and a customized uh, uh, power up display. So what we're, what we're going to do here, and I've got this, um, I've got this uh, And down here in the optional settings, we're going to open up our um, we're going to open up our one. We're, I'm running 121, so I'm going to run this in administrator mode, and I'm going to read the uh, profile. Yes, I want to make the changes. Okay, and, and again, you guys, I'm I'm still running that hundred dollar Amazon computer. I think it's gone up to 119 dollars. Uh, the demand's gone up, and so now they they've got them for 119, which is still a really good price. But I guess you guys uh, went out there and bought a bunch of them and they saw all this demand. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna um, we're gonna read this. Make sure I set the pro set the COM port. Uh, I think it's three, and I'm going to program read from radio. I just want the other data. There it goes. Still working. Okay. All right. Okay, cool. And we want to go over here to optional settings after we click on OK. And for whatever reason, the uh, cursor will not, the, the uh, uh, yellow cursor will not follow my mouse in, in this program. I'm running Windows 10, and if for whatever reason, they're not tracking with that. Okay, so read the radio, go to optional settings, click on the power on tab. Okay, and we want to, from the power on interface, we want to select custom character. Okay, and this is where we can type in whatever you want. In my case, I'm going to type in my call sign. So I'm going to type in KC0QVT, and then I'm going to type in my name. Let's see, oops, I'm going to try to put it in the center of the screen. Okay, now click OK, and I'm going to write that to the radio and show you what happens. And if everything goes like it should, you guys, uh, Joe, you can switch over to the radio as it's writing. Okay, it's writing, and then the computer. It should pop up and say, Okay. booting. Yeah, see, I just put that on the uh, um, startup screen. So that's how you do that. So you can check that box, make it your own. Okay, it used to just say any tone, like what it had there. So now we can do that. Now the next thing that um, is really cool to do is put a background screen, okay, on the uh, unit. And you can see in this case, it's all black. You know, it's kind of just generic black and I mean, it looks cool and all, but you can make some neat stuff with it. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how to do that to change the background screen on the 878. So we've already, you know, we go into CPS, read the radio. Okay, we want to go over here back to the optional settings tab again. Okay. And we want to, um, check the display tab. Okay, and then this is going to pull up a bunch of customizable uh, parameters for the front panel. Whoops, sorry about that. 
Uh, down here, you're going to see standby BK picture, and right now it says default, okay? And we want to set this uh, to custom one, okay? All right, we're going to do that. Now, now we need to go out to the internet, and I put a link here where you can find some, uh, I, f I found these on the, online. This guy's got some nice splash screens, and I'm sure he won't mind if we borrow them. He seems like it's okay to do that. He's put them out on the internet. So we're going to type in this G-E-O, G-E, you got the link in there, dot D-E, that's, I think that's Germany, Anytone, D-L, D-878, U-V, screens. If I type that in right, I should, ah. I do that right? No. Oh. I think I typed it on. Or typed it in wrong. Any. I don't even. Oh. Hmm. I need to get can't change the font size to get a bit better. Okay. Uh let's see. I wish I had the link to that. Huh. I gotta get the uh hang on, let me go out to my I don't know what's up with that. I'm just going to go over here and sign in real quick. The link does work. Yeah, I just got to get it on this computer. That's the problem. I built it on another computer and just a second. Yeah, don't. I'm going to just go over to my, my inbox real quick. So, um, yeah, let's see. Sent. All right. All right. I'm going to go down here to the link I made because I, I guess I typed it in and can't type it very well. There we go. All right. Should start downloading, there it goes. All right, now I got these screens. All right, so I wanna, sorry about that guys, it's always something in it. Okay, again, I'm just, just so you know, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm doing this all on the fly. All right, so I've got, I wanna extract all these bitmaps and I'll put them in my folder there. <clears throat> all right, now these are a pile of bitmaps that you can use to just poke through and see what's going on. There you go. All right. So these are displaying a bunch of um, screens that you can put on your Anytone. So let's go over here. And <clears throat> now that we've got these, uh, these up here, and I know where they're located, <clears throat> I'm going to pick that first one. I like it. Uh, any, any, any Chrome. Okay. I'm going to see if I can get that to work. Okay, so what you do is you go over here to Tool, and you want to go uh, where it says Standby BK Picture 1, okay? And then it's going to ask you to open the image, okay? And 
I believe, there it is. So I should be able to left click on this and it should, okay, open the picture. Okay, yeah, look at that. All right, that's what's going on. So I'm going to write that to the display. I'm sorry, to the radio here real quick. And then we're going to go over here and look at the radio. Press the button on the camera. Oh. How the, did that work? Yep. Okay. All right. So it should it should sit there. KC zero QVT wrong. Put that in there for you. And it's not displaying it. Why not? Did I got the image opened? Did I do something wrong? Let me go over here to optional settings. Custom one. That should be it. Custom picture one. Let me turn it off, turn it back on. Huh. Well, what am I doing wrong? Let's see, power up. Man, I'll tell you, sometimes uh, this thing will drive you crazy, won't it? I could try, I could power up with, I want the custom characters because that's, that's my call sign and my name. And the, uh, the display, I've got that set up for custom one. That's it. I don't know why it's not working. Separate display, off, on, channel switch. Save to bin. Oh, okay. I uh, see what Tim Bell saved to the bin. All right. Oops. Oh, okay. We. Okay, I'll try that, right, uh, Craig, 1714. I, I thought that, okay, I must have, uh, all right, let's write from here, and maybe this is what needs to be done. I'll wait for it to reboot. Okay. Okay, yeah, check out the radio, uh, I'm glad you guys are there, I tell you. <laughs> All right, let's see if that fixes it. Thanks to Craig, 714, there's that. Ah, there you go, cool, look at that. I got my splash screen on there now, that's nice. Cool. I, I'm going to probably change that to something that I, is a little bit more personable to me, like maybe, you know, where I went to university or something like that or, you know, Bridgecom. But that's, uh, uh, that's good. Hey, thanks, Craig. Uh, I, I, I've watched that, you know, I have not done that yet. Just so you guys know, I've watched some videos and I thought, you know what, I'll try to show everybody that. And that's, I didn't, you know, they, uh, from what I gathered, you just write it to it and it does restart the uh, radio as you, you can see. But, for whatever reason, it didn't repopulate like I saw in the videos. Well, yeah, okay, learn something new every day. All right, so um, you guys should know how to customize this radio for yourselves. You can add your call sign to the to the um, 
to the power on and actually that you can change that uh, power up display as well and you could put a splash image there as well if you recall there used to be an any tone splash image that's something else you can change as well um, and then of course now we've got this nice splash screen which does make it kind of harder to see the text okay and somebody earlier was asking about um, the the uh, size of the text and, and of course you can go over here into optional settings I don't know if you can change the, si the size of the, the text um, I know you can change the colors and that might be something you could play around with but what causes the text to get bigger or smaller is the focus so so hop over to the radio and uh, yeah what you can see here is I'm going to change between the top and the bottom and you, and you'll see that actually yeah the, t the P1 key is is changing from A to B A is on top and B is on the bottom so I'm there I'm on A then I'm going to go to B, and you can see the font get bigger, and that's which font or uh, chan uh, channel is in focus. Okay. All right. So I know now that the top channel is in focus. Okay. And if I key up, I'm going to key up on the parrot. And if I press P1 here, I'm going to be uh, on a uh, the repeater we set up a while back, the parrot for it. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Anyway, I got, I got a small amount of bonus content that I was going to throw at you guys, uh, you know, in the remaining time we're going to spend together. And um, one of the things early, early days when I was messing around with this AnyTone was that, you know, we, we've all, you know, kind of cut our teeth on analog repeaters. And, of course, the AnyTone is uh, an analog radio as well. And oftentimes, you know, when folks uh, are having problems, like, I can't hit the repeater, I can't, I can't, I don't even know what's going on. It won't. It won't work. I often ask, you know, well, can you even hear the repeater? Does it? Is your radio even able to receive the repeater? And sometimes it can be confusing because you're looking at a screen and you're seeing an, an S meter and you see that maybe there's some signal strength, but you're not exactly sure. Well, what is that? I mean, is that just noise in the area? And so sometimes you might want to go to an analog channel or create an analog channel, and uh, give you the opportunity to, to unmute the radio on the analog channel and just you know listen to it uh, have it unmute on carrier and just see if it is your radio hearing any digital activity or can you actually talk on a uh, an analog repeater so as part of some bonus content I uh, want to show you guys how to quickly on the fly uh, program an analog channel into your uh, any tone so that you can let's say you're in uh, proximity to a uh, friend's you, you visited a friend for the holidays or whatever, you didn't bring your computer, but you got your radio handy and you want to talk on a local repeater, and you've gone to a repeater book and you see that, uh, you know, there's a, a uh, frequency available to you. So, um, I'm going to do that real quick, and by way of example, I'm going to uh, go to a local repeater that I know of in the area, a two meter repeater by the way, um, called uh, W... See, I think it's 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 uh, whiskey zero tango echo. I'll just type that in and see if I can get that to pop up. And get there. Yeah, there it is, right there. Look at that. Pops right up. Okay, so I want to talk on. I'm going to see if I can t uh, get this repeater programmed up. So okay, so let's just take a look at the radio real quick. All right, we're, we're basically, we're on, um, I, I need to get the radio into what's called VFO mode. Okay, and I'm right now, I've got two buttons programmed on the front. P1 is programming, that allows for me to switch between channels, channel A and channel B. Okay, now P2, if I press that, that brings to focus, that moves me from memory channel to VFO channel, okay? Now, that button was pre-programmed. I've never messed with this radio as, as far as setting these uh, programmable buttons before. So it was, it, that's how it came out of the box. This is all customizable, folks. You can go in and mess with this. So I'm just going to take advantage of the, uh, the preset programming that came with the radio. Okay, so I know that this radio, or this repeater rather, um, has a downlink of 146.79 so that's what I'm going to receive on okay so I'm gonna go ahead and type that in 146.79 
And then I'm going to press the pound key, and that appends the uh, zeros to the end. That's kind of a little trick that you, a hot key you can do. Okay. We also note that it says digital. Okay. This is a digital channel, and I don't want digital. So I want to go into the menu, and now my menu's all lit up all green because I put my new splash screen on there. Okay. So I'm going to go down here to settings, and I'm going to click select, go to channel set. Okay. And I'm going to change the channel type. Okay, right now it says it's digital, so I'm going to go up here to analog, and I'm going to select that, okay. Got an analog channel now, so I'm going to go back out. Okay, I know my channel type is now analog. I got TCDT, RCDT, and RTCDT, just, just for the, uh, I'm going to translate that. That means PL tone or DPL tone for those, and we know... <clears throat> that this has an uplink tone of 107.2 okay so that is going to be my TCDT so I'm going to click that CTC means CTCSS or PL and I'm going to go and I'm going to put 107.2 I'm going to select that okay and then I'm going to back out I'm going to check my R, okay, back out. Now, if I go to RTCD, it'll, it'll actually set both the transmit and the receive PL tone with that. The next thing I need to do is I need to check my bandwidth. We're at wideband because we're on a 2-meter amateur repeater. I'm going to go down here, and I'm going to set my TX frequency because it's probably going to be, yeah, it just defaulted it to what the uh, radio's receive frequency is. Okay, so my uplink is 146.19, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this and type in 146.19 and then the pound key to put those zeros on there. Okay, TX frequency is success. All right, so I should be able to press P2 and back out of this. Um, okay, and I could I mean, I could build this channel up and then populate it into a zone, but I'm not going to do that. I just want to quickly get on the air and see if I can talk to somebody or just basically see if I can hear the repeater. Okay, so I should be able to see my power's turbo. That means I'm at two meters, I think that the two meters, this radio puts out seven watts. So I, I don't know if I can hit this repeater from being down. I mean, I'm kind of in a... Uh, we're, we're, we've got a hill in the way, but I, I don't know. I'm going to try it, and we'll see if the repeater comes up. KC0QVT. No, it's not. Why did I lose my nice beeps? KC0QVT. Yeah, might help if I had a. Let's see. I probably can't hit the repeater, but that's how you do that. That 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 um, uh, that should be how you. Uh, set up a, uh, a repeater, an analog repeater on the fly. I'm not sure what all this is. I want to get rid of that. Huh. Windows. Do you know how to get rid of this, Joe, on my computer? <laughs> I wish. Uh, anyway. Okay, yeah, click and just get, it'll, it'll dumps out. All right, so that's that. Um, but the, uh, probably not able to hit that repeater down here where I'm at. I was kind of worried about that. But I just wanted you to see how I can uh, you know, create an, an analog channel and... For some reason, and here's something that I've, I've observed. I've lost my uh, talk permit tone, and I'm going to find out why. I don't know why I'm not hearing that. I've, uh, if I go into my CPS, I got my alert tones. No, I shouldn't. Digital and analog, talk permit. Okay. I think what I need to do, and I saw somebody... Um, um, talk about this. I've, I've done a few things and I need to initialize the radio or uh, when you, what I mean by initialize is um, I've, I did the firmware 
a while back and I added some uh, a bunch of um, uh, talk groups over an existing talk group array and, and one of the things that I've seen folks talk about is that every now and then you you want to uh, export all of your functionality out of the radio and probably talk about this next week and uh, you know what it is uh, uh, Tim, he's he's the guru. He, I, I know why I, the, the radio's. Uh, you, that's another thing, folks. And by doing all this, you get kind of you lose your mind. When the cable's plugged in, you lose your audio. Okay, and I should be able to. There we go. KC0QVT. Yeah, and you get nervous, you know, talking to a bunch of folks. You lose what you're talking about, but. Anyway, I got my talk permit tone back. I didn't, thanks, Tim. Appreciate that. Uh, you're not going to hear anything with the cable plugged in, Mike. You're absolutely right. Lost my mind there. <laughs> anyway, um, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm just like you guys. I'm, I'm on this journey together, and uh, we're all stumbling around at times. I mean, this thing is pretty deep in what you can do, um, and yeah. You, you, as, a, as an engineer, you'll, you'll find, you know, like, you know, I've worked with repeaters at times, and, and we're sitting there trying to figure out, well, why is it not keyed up? And then we learn that, you know, well, we forgot to turn it on. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys have had those mistakes as well, but that's, that's the nature of this business. There's a lot of details here, and, um, you know, I'm glad you're suffering here with me. Anyway, I, you know, we're, we're about 47 minutes in. I can field some questions for you guys, um, but I just wanted to introduce to you guys a lot of the, uh, you know, get your BAM or, <clears throat> excuse me, get your brand, or, Brandmeister password set up, and you can start playing around with customizing your, uh, your AnyTone. It's a, it's a really cool radio, and you can make it your own. I mean, you can, you can play around with it. I know it's not the, you know, you're not talking to anybody, but, you know, it makes you feel good, you know. It's like, hey, this radio is mine, you know, and I've got it looking the way I want it to look. And it's kind of like why folks put their call sign on their uh, license plates. It's, just, it's the same principle. So, um, yeah, Darren, uh, I'm going to put the uh, link to the tablet computer in the show notes. It's in the previous show notes. There's a link to where you can go get one of these. Um, this thing's awesome. I mean, for, for what it's doing, uh, 100 bucks or 100, 119, I think is what it was last time. In fact, I can uh, maybe go, I can go out here to, uh, let's go to YouTube and I can show you. Let me dump you guys over there real quick and I will go to a video that we did last time. It's not, the, it's not the fastest computer in the world, but it will, I mean, it's talking on the internet, it's got HDMI. Yeah, here, I'll just, uh, well, you got that, that's live. We don't want to do that. So if I do, um, you just type in the name here. I'll type in how to. It should populate with a previous. Yeah, that's live. Okay, yeah, let's go down here. Step by step. Yeah, this is a good video that we did a while back on how to hit a local DMR repeater. Okay, so down here, yeah, tablet computer used in the live stream. So there's a link right here. And this should take you to that computer. Well, it used to, they may no longer sell it. All right, well, you guys got me. Okay, well, it was for sale for a long time. Um, let me just real quick, uh, it, they're, they're, you want a tablet computer running Windows 10. Uh, they should be, there should, it's a, uh, a Cambio, I think is what it's called. Um, so check that out. Um, not, uh, Let's see, uh, Windows. Maybe that, yeah, that might be it. I don't know. You want one run Windows, not, yeah, here's one, Cambio, Windows 10, touchscreen. Let's see what that. I think you guys already bought them all out. See all buying options. Okay. Oh wow. I don't know, but that's that's the computer at Cambio. Uh, 
So I'll keep my, I mean, I'll keep my eye out and, you know, if we see more, but that's, that's what we ended up getting. They were like a hundred bucks. Yeah, there's one, let's see. They all run Android, unfortunately. Uh, there's one for $200. Um, but keep your eye out for those. Um, anyway, I won't labor you too long. You guys can go ahead and search on that, but, you're, but that's what I did. And I, we, uh, I know there's uh, several folks that took advantage of that. Uh, we just we just wanted to show you guys how to quickly uh, get um, a computer to uh, to program your um, to program your uh, any tone because there were a lot of guys having problems with computers and setting up drivers and all that and so go back and watch some of those videos and and we can you know get you uh, introduced to that because uh, we're we're going to continue to go down the rabbit hole with you guys anyway. That ought to do it for today, guys. Um, okay, yeah, Mike Harding says Walmart has an ONN tablet computer for around $125. It works pretty good, too. So thanks, Mike. Do you guys have any questions? And I, I know there's a lag here, so I'll wait for a few moments. Okay. All right. Well, um, anyway, you got the show notes. Um, go back. We're going to have the video published, uh, so you go. You guys can go back and look and see. You know how I programmed up the uh, uh, VFO channel, how to set up your Brandmeister password, and then also to uh, customize your display. Um, Thanks, Dan. K-O-4-E-U-H. That O throws me off. K Kilo Oscar 4, Echo Uniform Hotel. Thank you so much. And Mike Harding, Darren, Jerry Vincent, Tim. Tim Bell, thank you for the feedback. Craig, 714, Bill, 28200. Um, thanks for joining us this week. I'll have some more content for you next week. Uh, but in the meantime, 7-3s and have a great week.